<laughs> Sorry, <laughs> couldn't resist. Hey everyone, welcome back to Life Point Students Online. Hey, uh, this is the second week uh, here in our culture where God's Kingdom clashes with the World Series. Um, world Series, sorry. Um, I just want to uh, remind you that actually here on, I uh, almost said January. <laughs> Man, we're all messed up, aren't we here? Uh, on June 13th, which we'll get here in a moment, because um, there's another significant thing that day. But that's actually going to be when um, these lessons will actually go to really more of a recap. Uh, we will no longer be offering the full lesson online because by that point, uh, we should be pretty much back to normal here. Uh, as the point is, uh, we're kind of getting into a mask optional uh, situation here uh, towards the end of May in the early June. So be aware of that. Uh, so max masks will be optional. If you feel comfortable with that, I I'm very pleased to be able to say that because I know some people that was a real uh, hindrance. Uh, if it's still a concern, you know, again, it's still optional. If you feel free to do it here at LifePoint Students, our, our motto, our, our, our really our goal and everything is that this is a safe place for all. And we want to make that um, a, an emotional place where it's safe, a physical place, a spiritual place. Um, and we do try to make that uh, our standard. Uh, so uh, masks or no masks or wh whatever you feel comfortable with, just know that we want you to feel comfortable here um, in any case. But please be aware that that's coming. So by June 13th, which is again, uh, it's, it's graduation Sunday, graduation recognition. Uh, we'll talk about that here in a minute. But I just want you to know that when you come in person, just know that um, we're kind of moving in that direction where things are a, a little bit, a touch more normal, a touch more back to the way they used to be. So um, please be aware of that. Also, I'm putting up on the kind of the screen right now, maybe you're seeing it, <laughs> at least I hope so, if I did it right. Um, this will be graduation Sunday, I already mentioned it, June uh, 13th at our services. Uh, if you are a graduate uh, for the year 2021, High school or college, we just want to recognize you. We'd like a picture, uh, well, the name you prefer, your, a picture, and just some information about what you're doing after graduation. Uh, maybe it's going on to more college, or maybe it's going on to the workforce. Either way, we'd just like to recognize you and celebrate the day, the, the, the accomplishment with you. So email that stuff to me, J Thomas, uh, capital J, capital T, uh, at lifepointpa.org. Also, coming up on the screen here, you'll see that um, we are also having this mini mission trip. Well, uh, why is it longer? Why aren't we going further? Well, there's a lot of reasons for that. And uh, most of it stems from the fact that COVID is still a thing, but it's going away. Uh, but some places are still a little bit shy. And, and, and so let's, let's just celebrate the fact that we can go out and do something. But the mini mission trip uh, is June 11th and 12th actually so that's the friday and saturday before graduation recognition sunday so join us uh, and go help us help kenbrook bible camp um, they're getting ready for summer camp having lots of campers we want the chance to go and kind of fix or repair or do some yard work basically help them be more uh, if, as, as efficient and prepared and uh, have the campus as beautiful as possible for all the kids and the campers that are coming in for the summer so that we can help minister to them as they minister to other people. And that's why we're calling it a mission trip. Come with us Friday. We're going to hang out, do some, uh, have some uh, campfire, play some games. Saturday, do nothing but long, hard work. <laughs> so uh, join us for that. Uh, if you want to sign up, there's, uh, you should receive an email. There's stuff on social media. And if you still ha don't have any of that information, email me and we'll get you hooked up. Uh, and the cost is only $30, just really the cost and price of food. So I'm very excited about it. I'm glad we have something mission trip wise for the summer. So uh, we'd love to see you there. All right, so let's actually get into the lesson. We're talking about culture today. And, you know, the kind of tagline here is where God's kingdom clashes with the kingdom of the world. The, 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 the powers that are satanic powers, the, you know, the God, you know, God and uh, his culture, his, his work within us as his followers, how we're just going to constantly clash with uh, Satan's influence in the world uh, and the culture that he tries to bring around. We talked about this last week when we, when we focused on Esther. And, and today, 
well, throughout the rest of the series, we're really focusing on biblical characters. Daniel, for example, who's today, um, and Esther last week. These people who constantly had to face, um, do I live for God or do I, do I just go along with the culture that I'm in? Esther had that problem. Daniel has the problem. Another example would be Joseph, sold into slavery into Egypt. Uh, he could have just you know, gone, gone with it, gone with the flow and made no trouble and you know, kind of just existed. But in all of these examples, Esther, Daniel, Joseph, um, they purposed beforehand to live in a way that, that put God first, put God's kingdom first, uh, despite what the outcome might be. So let's actually dive into that today. We're calling this, again, this lesson, Daniel's Resolve. Uh, our scripture actually comes from uh, Daniel chapter 1, um, verses 8 through 21. So a little bit of uh, kind of background here. Uh, at a very young age, Daniel um, and his, uh, the three friends we meet um, in this passage um, were taken as captives into the Babylonian court. Now, um, culture, you know, cities. Now, think back, we talked about Esther last week. Daniel's kind of in the same boat. Remember and keep in mind, so many uh, stories are a result of the fact that many years before this, <laughs> centuries before this, uh, Israel was consistently unfaithful, consistently uh, going against God's um, warnings about their unfaithfulness, consistently going against God, uh, calling them to repent and return back to Him. Otherwise, there would be judgment. There would, there would be something that would come and teach them the importance uh, of not being faithless in, in God, or just being faithful to more pagan gods rather than the true God. So God, through the Old Testament, He sends these, these prophets. We talked about that last fall. He sends leaders who try to turn the people, but they don't, they're not there forever. And when they're gone, and, even more tyrannical or more pagan following leader would come in and lead the people more astray. So as a result of that, remember the, the kingdom split into two. There was Israel and Judah. First, the Babylonians came. God used, yes, a <laughs> pagan warlike people uh, to exact punishment upon Israel and Judah. Don't ever forget Judah. But God brings that upon them in the form of the Babylonians. The Babylonians take away captives after destroying so much. Okay? And whatever they have, you know, out of that remnant of people, of Israelites, come young men and women. And as we talked last week, further down the road, the Assyrians defeat the Babylonians, the Persians beat the Assyrians, and that's when we get Esther. But this is so this is long before Esther, technically. And here we are. Daniel is with his friends that he's he's coming in, he's coming to Babylon with. Maybe he was an infant, maybe he was already born into Babylon. We we don't quite maybe see that part, but we do know that he's a young man at this point, at the start of his book, Daniel. So here he is in Babylon with his friends. There are Israelites captive in a foreign land, but um, their luck is about to change. Now, before that happens, remember that these were Israelites. They were trying to stay strong and true to their faith, the true faith, right? So they did something that set themselves up to success. Um, and, and basically what that was is they were going to take a stand against the culture. They were going to not only remain true to their own culture, yes, but part of staying true to their own culture is remembering and, and putting Yahweh, the one true God, first in all things, um, which we'll see here in the story. But what that kind of word is, that, that, what they did is, in a word, is they resolved. They resolved and purposed within themselves and each other um, to stay true, to, if, if something comes against them, they speak truth to it, and that truth is God, Yahweh, uh, of the Old Testament, uh, of of Father, uh, you know, God, the Father of Jesus Christ. You know, this is what they purposed ahead of time. Now, 
interesting. They resolved to mean true, you know, set apart, set apart, stand out, while also not uh, giving into the culture of the Babylonian, and which is what's going to try to be offered to them. Um, which, again, in the ancient world, this made lots of, lots of sense. I'm, I'm going to probably say that a lot during this lesson. In ancient culture, it was easier, it was better to take the youngest and the brightest and change them, convert them over to your culture, and that way you grow your culture and you get kind of the best and brightest out of the people you just took captive. Pretty simple. Romans did this all the time, too, when they came along. Babylon was no different. Better to assimilate them and, and make them part of the whole rather than, you know, kind of leave them out there. Um, older people would die, and yet we'll change their younger people to serve us. Very common. So Daniel and them resolved not to let that happen, and that's what kind of sets their course. Um, Daniel and his friends, along with the rest of Jerusalem, were, again, captive in Babylon, to the king named Nebuchadnezzar. Now, you have maybe heard that name. Maybe you, it sounds familiar. It's important uh, to keep in mind at this point, but it's not necessarily central. Um, just to know that he's out there and their kind of goal here is to maybe eventually work their way up to working for Nebuchadnezzar or whoever else is king and ruler. Um, now, obviously, the whole reason we're talking about it, the Babylonians had different beliefs and lifestyle, uh, just culture, um, than the Israelites. Uh, specifically, and without getting into huge amount of detail, um, they worshipped different gods. So idol worship abounded. You know, they had many. They had a pantheon of gods. Uh, much of it kind of centered around the abyss, around death, around uh, the afterlife, um, among other things. You know, that's. It wouldn't be unheard of for human sacrifice, right? Very much against the Israel the Israelite uh, way of living, the way of the laws that God put forth in uh, Exodus, uh, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, Num all those things that God described on how the Jewish person should live. This all can, went completely against that. So, obviously, it was inevitable that the Babylonian Israelite cultures would clash, right? So, um, this is all a setup for what's about to happen. Um, now, as I said, their luck is about to change, these guys. In what seems like a very fortunate um, turn of events, Daniel and his friends are chosen to be a part of like this special program, uh, to receive like an advanced education in, in Babylon. Um, hey, you know, that's like getting a free ride to more than an Ivy League. Uh, it's more, it's more, it's like the education among, above, beyond any, any education in the ancient world. Um, the way it described is in scripture in Daniel 1.4 is that they would receive uh, or they would educate the, the youth in the literature and language of the Chaldeans. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot to you and I, but that was kind of education beyond education back then. Uh, the language and literature of the Chaldeans was more than the gold standard. It was, it was kind of universally accepted as being some of the brightest of the bright. And so to have these young men in this training, they're looking for the best of the best of the best, right? So Daniel and his friends are in a prime position here. So the temptation to kind of just blend in the background and survive. If I survive and they kind of go through this, I, I can go anywhere. I can do anyway. I can serve anyone. And kings and rulers will listen to me because I have this wisdom, right? That's the temptation that's on the table. Now, there's another version of that, which is I'm going to, do, I'm going to learn all this, but I'm going to keep, keep it on my terms. And that's kind of the direction Daniel goes. Now, um, the program essentially, remember, uh, would train the young men to eat and act uh, like Babylonians so that eventually they would serve the king. And the king wouldn't want anyone to kind of not be loyal, right? So remember, this whole training program, yes, it's to educate, but a lot of it is, again, just to train out their own culture, train out uh, their own old beliefs and give them new beliefs. 
And again, this is why Daniel and them resolved not to let that happen. To, by, to let, basically stand out and uh, stick true to who they were, who God created them to be, and serve him even while having this training happen. So let's kind of see what happens. So actually, before we do that, let's take a step back. Just to stop for a second. If you're in Daniel's shoes, this doesn't sound so bad. If you're Daniel, you see a way out of basically captivity. You see a way out of having this uh, history of being feeling like your people were defeated. You, have, you can move on and kind of live as your own leader, ruler, whatever, at least to some extent in, you know, in the ancient world. So think about that as we kind of move on. This doesn't all sound so bad. Um, and again, let's face it, if you're going to, you know, kind of be kidnapped from home, you might as well live like royalty if you can. So that's kind of like, again, that's the temptation kind of we face today. Do we go with everyone else or do we stick true? Are we resolved to stick true to our faith? Um, now, let's point out some issues that Daniel, some problems that Daniel uh, were, was going to face. Simply put, um, the food that the king ate was considered unclean by Jewish standards and had been sacrificed to idol. Again, sure, you might say, okay, yeah, that's bad. I can see why they wouldn't want to do that. You have to remember that physical cleanliness and spiritual cleanliness were very much together uh, for the Jew. Uh, still is. So when God trained Israel as he want, made them wander around the desert, he was teaching them what is appropriate to eat, why it's spiritually un clean or unclean, why that also has a natural effect. There's a natural side to that. If you eat bad things constantly, bad things will ha happen to you naturally. That's God's law, kind of in a nutshell. Um, and you didn't separate uh, physically unclean stuff from spiritually. So what we do know is that not only was it unclean animals that they were told not to eat uh, because of the natural effect and the spiritual effect. So these were bad animals and they were prepared in a bad way. The Jewish, these Jewish young men could not eat this, not without giving up their faith. By the moment they would eat it, they were basically saying they give up their way of life. They give up their faith. They give up really on the one true God. And also because and this is the other big one. It was sacrificed to idols. It is a complete, the, the food themselves represented a complete recognition of some other fake deity. And the Israelites were not going to do that. Look at your Ten Commandments. Thou shalt have no other gods before me, right? Boom. <laughs> that's, that's a clear declaration. To eat that is a clear declaration that you give, you're throwing it all away and going with the Babylonians. This is why Daniel and them resolved not to do this. So what did, what did they do? Well, um, again, uh, this wasn't, a, it should be said that Daniel had already known this decision might be coming, uh, and he decided and resolved with himself um, long before this moment. What, the impression you get is, and when you read this, you already know Daniel has already, like, boom, from the moment they approach him, he already knows what he's going to do. So let's actually read that together. Uh, Daniel 1, 8 and 9. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine, and he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself in this way. Now God had caused the official to show favor and compassion upon Daniel. So this is huge. Uh, Daniel, again, pretty boldly says, I don't want to do this. Don't let me do this. So the official says, what is, well, let's, what does he say? Well, <laughs> um, I, I, before we get to that, I think it should be said Clearly, probably in all of Daniel's life, his clash of cultures was probably a daily, constant occurrence. And he never seemed to get like, dragged down by it. Like, he always saw every day as an opportunity to, again, be resolved and to put the true God first in all things. Which is also how he got stuck in the lions then later on, but we won't go into that right now. <laughs> um, this is what I find so fascinating, is that from the moment we meet Daniel, he is constantly at odds with the culture that he's in because it's everywhere. And he's trying to not only 
live for himself. He, in, in many cases, is trying to bring God's kingdom to this foreign culture. And in some cases, it is really quite successful. And that's, qu that's quite a bit of doing. Um, uh, now, Daniel still recognized the opportunity. He wasn't squandering this opportunity. He wasn't trying to get out of this opportunity. He recognized it for what it was, is that if he could not only make it through this program and become a trusted person in the culture, he could affect change from within inside while also not being affected himself. He'd, he'd show how God's laws and ways, which Daniel lived and followed, were greater than that of Babylon. So, so what happens when Daniel boldly says, hey, I don't want to do this. Don't let, me, don't let me do this. Verse 11 through 19, Daniel then said to the guard whom the chief official had appointed over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, these were his three other friends, um, verse 12, please test your servants for 10 days. Just, just give us vegetables and water to drink. Verse 13, and then compare our appearance with that of the young men who uh, eat the royal food, the unclean food, and treat, your, and treat your servants in accordance to what you see. Again, this is a, this is a bold and ma but yet I would say masterful move. It could, it could have totally backfired, but Daniel knew it wouldn't. Um, so what happens? Uh, okay, verse 14. So the official agreed to this and tested them for 10 days. At the end of the 10 days, they, were looked, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the other young men who ate the royal food. I mean, I'm not surprised. <laughs> um, so the guard took away their choice food and the wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables instead. Now, what happens as a result of it? Verse 17. To these four young men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning. And Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. At the end of the time set by the king to bring them into his service, the chief official presented them to Nebuchadnezzar. And this is where we meet Nebuchadnezzar again. Plays a big role here, but what happens? The king talked with them all, and he found none equal to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So they entered the king's service. Now, this is not one big uh, pr uh, pr promo for vegetarianism. I, what, when I often read this, and maybe you guys get the impression too, like, yes, it's healthier, right? You know, um, they weren't eating like these, all these fatty things and drinking all this wine. Yeah, I mean, again, this is where God's natural law comes into, into place. If you eat nothing but that, for a long time, for years, they were in this program. I think it was three to four years that they were to be in this program. Um, if that's all you eat, um, first of all, it's going to have an effect. But I think, I think more than that, beyond the vegetables, you know, I think Daniel just named something he knew would be safe. Um, so there's, there is that. But beyond the, the eating itself and what they consumed, I think what I see in this is that Daniel was already resolved for many things sticking true to the true God in all things. But I think also they weren't having to worry about, they, were, they took the opportunity to not have to worry about changing their appearance, changing who they were deep down. They, they were not as con having to be as conscientious about how Babylonian they were becoming. So they could easily focus on what really mattered, which was to gain the knowledge because we, as you read, God enabled them to become much more sophisticated in, in, in their education, be, clearly beyond all other people. And I think because they weren't trying to, they weren't having to be bothered to spend so much energy and the drama that comes with that expenditure of energy to become more like the people around them rather than just be comfortable in the people God created them to be. So that's kind of my take on it. And read, read it yourself and see what you gather. Um, now, kind of the wrap up. Having a meaningful relationship with Jesus isn't often about making one big decision, uh, big bold decision or act. Okay, so yes, when we come to Christ, yeah, that, is, that is one big large decision. I think what we're saying here is that 
you know, to live our faith every day isn't one bold act here and then here. Um, sometimes it might mean that. Sometimes it's, uh, I don't know, it's so spor sporadic. It's so here and there, but not consistent, you know. And I, yes, I think we might make these big, bold things, and, and a lot of people might see it, and that might have an impact on someone. That's great. But I think when there's not consistency to it, uh, is, it really, is it really about put it, pushing ourselves out there and seeing, letting people see us you know, as this big, bold person, yet not being consistent afterwards? I don't know. To me, I think, truly, more often it's about making lots of small decisions that make a big difference. To me, that if you're doing things, yeah, in the, in the big, bold, f fine, but if you're doing it across the board, even in the small things, that shows consistency. consistency. It shows where your heart is. It's really putting God first, um, which kind of goes to the next point, which is, you know, if we hope to be the kind of people that do boldly stand up for our faith, like Daniel, we need to make, again, these little consistent everyday decisions that prioritize God. And I think that's kind of the point is, when we make one big thing, that's great, and it might ha it really may have an impact on someone else. But I think that's God being um, using the opportunity to really impress you know the Holy Spirit really working on something, um, someone I should say. You know, I think in the little things we show God's prioritization. We, we're we're putting God first in all things, rather than just here and here, when it's convenient or, or whatever, or in a moment of real faith. Yeah, but. It, are we living that faith in all the things? So I think like Daniel, the example here to clash with the culture around us is let's be different in the music we listen to, in the things that we watch. And I know it's hard, I do. When you, when you hear all the things that are on Netflix and, and um, Disney Plus, I mean, all these things that are out there and you don't want to feel like you're left behind some way, yeah, I get it. But the point is that it's better to be resolved now for what comes later, right? And that's what Daniel had already done. And that's, that's kind of like a really our final point. Like Daniel, you and myself, we need to make the decision ahead of time so that when um, your faith is tested, and let's face it, you will be tested. <laughs> um, you will be challenged. Um, the point is that you already know, you should already have set what your response will be. Already know how you'll respond to these situations as they come. It's not easy to get to that place, I get it. Daniel did it somehow, you know, and if he can do it, you and I are able to do it as well. We just have the purpose to do it ahead of time. So with that, I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day and we'll talk to you later. Bye.